What if your entire life was a lie? What if your parents weren't your parents, and your embryo was in was in fact put into your parents before you were born? What if everything that you knew was a lie, and that you weren't even human? Hello, fellow plot questers! It is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, back with another book review, and today we got Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shadow Messenger herself and well let's get right on to it so let's get right into it sophie foster the main character of the series that's this girl right here and she is a pretty uh, pretty she's a prodigy basically she's in high school but then she's also 12 she's a senior in high school but she's freaking 12 and she has photographic memory super super duper smart and oh yeah forgot to mention she can she's been able to read thoughts since she was freaking five yeah, five. And one day, she's at a museum. She's just vibing, chilling, you know? And everyone hates her because everyone hates prodigies. I can relate. Just kidding. And um, she meets this boy. And he's really, really cute. He has blue eyes. And he has this particular accent to him. Like, it seems British, but somehow more refined. And then what happens is this guy goes, Wait, you can hear... People's voices inside their heads? Wait, you're a telepath. And she's like, what the freaking hell is a telepath? What do you mean? And what that actually does, what actually, what he, why she is a telepath. And a telepath is an elf who can read minds and do a lot of cool stuff. An elf? <laughs> yeah, she's an elf. And she finds out that this huge magical world exists. In fact, her humans are known as, or has been banished from that world. And they live now, what they live in now is called the Lost Cities. And what elves live in, live in are called, I mean, the Forbidden Cities, I'm sorry. Let's start it over again. Humans live in the Forbidden Cities. And elves, they live in the Lost Cities. And these Lost Cities include, for example, Atlantis. Humans used to live there. Elves sunk it because humans sort of forgot the pact. And what is the pact? Basically what happened was they went, okay, all sentient creatures, we sort of go under the same wing and we say we have an alliance and we live peacefully. But nope. The humans went, hey, 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 you know, we want to rule this entire alliance, so let's start a war. And the elves didn't like that, obviously. And they banished all of them, erased their memories, and... All the myth that these humans, us humans, talk about is actually from the elves and the magical creatures that used to be on this planet with the elves. Which I believe is a pretty cool concept. I mean, it, it's just pretty cool. It just pushes me right in. And Sophie Foster, she is an elf as well, a lost child. And so what happens is they, is this guy, and that boy's name is Fitz, and she has a teeny tiny bit of a crush on him, because apparently all elves are handsome, as we will find out. And she takes her to see one of the elf cities, and she believes him. And then right after that, she takes her into the elf world, and there she meets his dad, who is Alvin. And basically, his dad says, like, you are an elf, and you're a very powerful telepath, because we can't break into your mind, and you can break into ours. And not many people can do that. In fact, I haven't seen anyone who can break my mind. So, in other words, you're super duper strong, and we want you, well, we need you, as an elf, to belong here. Because you do belong here. You're an elf. You're not a human. And so she gets this, she meets a lot of cool people, and for... Basically, she decides to stay with the elves. I mean, more like the elves are like you need to because like you're not you're not you're not human, so you shouldn't be in the human world. Like, bruh, no. So, and of course, she's sad about it, and she really doesn't want to leave her parents. But they say, okay, you have to leave. So we'll wipe their memories to make you like you and never existed because she likes it better than them faking her death, mostly because. She really, really doesn't want to see her parents get sad, which is kind of sweet of her. And then she starts at Foxfire. Foxfire is an academy. 
um, for the most gifted and most powerful elves. And there, she doesn't really want to funk at all. So she works really hard on everything, and her photographic memory helps with that. And she's getting, she's not been doing really good in most of the subjects. However, she's doing excellent at telepathy because she's a natural pug. And she's doing really, really well. However, there's a mystery going on. There are white flames going around the planet Earth, as in the human world, which isn't going out at all. Which is really, really weird. Maybe it's magic related. And there are a lot of unspoken mysteries that is going on. And no one is telling her the specific stuff. Like, why was she with humans? Why is her memory jumbled? What is going on? No one tells her anything. However, while that mystery is going on, she's having an excellent school life. She has made some friends. And these friends are Fitz, who, you know, she rescued her or got her out of the human world and Dex who she met at a pharmacy that his dad operates that is super nice to her because he obviously has a crush on her come on seriously guys and then we've got Bianca Bianca or something like that I think it's Bianca I actually read it as Bianca for the first, first like half of the book then I realized there was no C because I'm an awesome guy <laughs> and Bianca who is his, his sister, and the, and the Marilla, who is this super sassy girl, when, and who rescued her from the first day when she, you know, she, she was actually, she was actually alone, and no one was really talking to her. So, in other words, things are pretty good, and meanwhile, she's slowly catching up with all the lessons, even the subjects that she absolutely suck at, also no alchemy, and she's doing really well. In general and then there there are some cool instances where she sometimes most of the time actually managed to beat fits and like pushing telepathically or doing telepathy things and she can do a lot of cool things that other telepathic people can't do for example find the location of the per person that she's reading the mind of block people out her impregnable mind because no one can look into your into her head and she can literally do like she can do a lot of cool stuff which is really cool. And she's slowly, slowly, slowly getting suspicious of, you know, everyone. Because she's getting freaking letters with mysterious things written uh, written in her locker. And no one's telling her anything about her actual birth. And she doesn't know what is going on. And we don't know what's going on at all. And, like, yeah. Like, what, what is she supposed to do? No one's telling her anything. And... If she tries to investigate on her own, it, it it's probably going to be illegal. So, yeah, it's not going well at all. However, after we see a bunch of accidents and a bunch of Sophie messing up on things, however, excelling in some of them, she gets to the point where she gets kidnapped. Where did that come from? Uh, basically, there's this slow buildup of information. And one of that most important information is known as Everblaze. A fire that does not go out. Fire that doesn't go out. Oh, God. And basically, this, this Everblaze stuff, it seems awfully familiar to the stuff that's burning down the human world right now. Yeah. It's Everblaze. And her family is probably in danger because of that as well. And she wants to end it right now because, well, duh. However, the council is like, nah, it's probably not ever, but it's human chemicals, blah, 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 blah. So she does the illegal thing and gets on a productile uh, dinosaur, flying dinosaur, and she goes in there and bottles every place. Where did the flying dinosaur come from? I'm not going to explain that in detail because that's going to take me 20 minutes. And... She managed to bottle up the Everblaze and do a lot of impossible feats that she should not have been able to do. And she does that. And obviously, the baddy baddy people who started the Everblaze fire is not happy with her. And they catch her, and they kidnap her and Dex, and torture her to tell her what she knows when she literally knows nothing because her memories have been locked away somehow and there are memories that a person just put in her head which is really 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 weird <sighs> sigh we're well what's the 
what, what are these secrets, man? We, we want to know. We want to know. Yeah. But anyways, she she lets that happen, and some person comes in, rescues her, and she manages to escape. However, she's in France. She has no resources. Manages to find a gateway into you know the Elven world, and then these super annoying dudes come again and buy clothes and they're like we're gonna capture you Bleh. and she immediately goes okay no and she does this thing where she goes super mad at everything is dark and she pushes the darkness from within her and apparently all the guys are on the ground in pain apparently she's an inflictor as well which is another type of elven specialty special ability where you can inflict pain or any sort of emotion to another person it's Cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, in other words, we have a. She managed to escape, and she also managed to light jump this thing that elves can do that that she she doesn't really not really know very well to do until then. And she was also half dead and super 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 tired from being tortured and gagged the entire like two like a week or a week. And she managed to do all these things. She managed to escape and also send a telepathy message from across the world to Fitzy, Fitzy, Fitz, and Fitz tells her, find, manages to find her, rescues her, and she comes back to life. Hoo-hoo! And then everything's okay, and her, and her, like, stuff, and her all her wrongdoings have been completely forgiven, and it's all cool. Now, a couple of things. I want to say, that this book is structured extremely similarly with Harry Potter. <laughs> That's one thing that I really, really did notice. Like with the with the kid, with her being taken out of the human world, open to a world of wonders, going to a magic school, her sucking at alchemy, which is really, really similar to potions, and that teacher like hating her but not hating her at the same time, <gasps> Professor Snape, and her. Yeah, and there's and one this mortal enemy probably trying to kill her Voldemort and etc. So that I feel like that's really really similar to Harry Potter. And we we all um and yeah that's I feel like that's really really similar to Harry Potter. And the end is extremely similar as well because Harry he he sort of like breaks a huge rule into going in like the forbidden room, and they take and like she she broke broke a law to save lives and Harry broke a law to save the Philosopher's Stone and they both got basically punished but not punished because she was like they were like okay we'll write that you got you did a crime but we'll say crime resolved underneath it and you fault you did our judgment because you found out a little terrorist group that we we didn't really know about until now and you solved all, all of you, you you basically uncovered a lot of our problems which is pretty cool so we're gonna sort of do good thing, bad thing, and then only good thing left. Is that fine with you? And she was like, yeah, duh. And meanwhile, Harry Potter, Dumbledore was like, okay, yeah, yeah, minus pretty much everything of Gryffindor's planes and our list. And everyone's like, no. And then she's like, okay, so for, for Ron, I'll give you like, I don't remember specific points, but it was something like, for a skill in chess, I'll give you like 400 points. For Harry Potter, for his bravery, I'll give you like 1,000 points. And then suddenly Gryffindor won. <laughs> and that's it's very similar to what happened in this book. So I can draw a lot of parallels between this book and this book. Uh, that's, that's something I wanted to say. However, I want to make sure that I'm saying this. There is a distinct difference in concept and ideas. And the plot is way, way, way different. And... A lot more mysterious with secrets. However, it still has that childish, Christmassy, wonderful feeling that I want from a fantasy book. Oh, I also want to mention the beginning of the book is really similar to Percy Jackson one. I'm just saying, and uh, um, Percy Jackson also, he's in a museum, and he gets attacked by a monster, and his teacher gives him a pen, and when he uncaps that pen, it turns into a sword. And that's the start of Percy Jackson's adventure. And she, she's she's in a museum, looking at dinosaurs and stuff. And he he literally comes and goes, "Wait, what?" Yeah, pretty cool. 
I, I just wanted to say that's similar. Of course, I'm not saying, like, she copied. I mean, to be fair, The Greatest Author is still, like, my book. It's a combination of all the books here. So, like, yeah, I mean, I don't blame her. But I don't, like, even if she didn't copy, these are really cool and good, powerful concepts that are really relatable. Like a museum trip from school happens to everyone. It's relatable. That's why it's used. And being pulled into this magical world of all this cool stuff and this cool, all this, every kid on the planet wants to do that. You know what I mean? So I think it really does make sense that that kind of concept is used a lot. And it's, and it's hard to do it right. She did it right. And she became a billion. I mean, she made a, a lot of money. Um, she did it right. And she makes a lot of money too. He's a millionaire. She did it right as well, from what I can tell. It's really well written. And that is my evaluation of the book. And it is a really good book, super duper enjoyable. I 100,000% recommend it. Actually, my best friend in fifth grade recommended this book. And I didn't read it because it was a really long, and this is, I think it has like 12, 14 books in it, in the series. Um, I'm in ninth grade now. <laughs> I got this book recommended to me like, Three years ago, probably, some, some, somewhere around there, and I've read it now. And I'm, I'm definitely going to read this book, too. It's like, right, right, book two's right here. So, like, I'm definitely reading this. It's a great series. And like always, your plot course around the plot course. And like I said, highly recommended, and have a great day.